Welcome back to the channel everybody and today we're going to do something I hope you love, I know I love, and that's beef jerky. And uh, I had a kind of a special request and if you know what this is, that's the eye of the round. I love using this piece for beef jerky and I'll go into why. But uh, let's not waste any time and get started. Okay, I'm all gloved up and uh, let's just get this bad boy out of the bag and trimmed up. I'm just gonna take a, a normal boning knife, trimming knife, whatever you wanna call it. How I want my eye of the round or piece of meat trimmed, I want all the fat off and I want all the silver skin off. The fat doesn't translate very nice to beef jerky and so does the silver skin. It turns very chewy and we don't want that. That's just a big no-no. And I'm gonna throw everything into the bowl, fat and trim, and we're gonna use that later and we're gonna separate that later, but you keep it all because you can use it. What I'm gonna do, I don't like the end. Take the end off, square that a bit. Square you off a bit. This loose stuff, don't like that. We want all this beautiful meat exposed. And if I forget anything along the way that you think I should explain, leave me some comments below and I will answer your questions. We are done. That can come off. That we're gonna deal with later. I cut it with the grain and if you see the piece here, you see the grain going with the beat, like with the whole muscle. It's going the whole length. What I do, I normally cut it into three. And I cut it in half usually. So we got the grains, as you can see, they're going this way now. And that's how we're gonna cut it. And later on when the beef jerky's done, I'll show you why I like to have the grains with the cut. Uh, a lot of people will cut it against the grain. I'll show you why I like it and I'll let you guys decide. Now, if I'm gonna do a lot, I'm gonna use a slicer, a meat slicer to get them all the same. But, uh, I'm... Oh, where are you? Can you focus? I'm gonna say that's about three or four mils thick. That's how thick I like to get it by hand. I'm not gonna be 100% all the way, but as good as I can. So I'm gonna finish this off real quick and then uh, we'll get to the next step. The next step is to know exactly how much weight is in here. I'm gonna go weigh it, come back, and then uh, we're gonna figure out the, the spicing. We've got 2.235 kilos and I'm gonna show you the way I figure out a batch, it doesn't matter how much meat you have. I could have this much meat, I could have 20 pounds or 15 kilos, whatever. The way I have it worked out, it doesn't matter and I'll show you why. This is my uh, recipe book. Every batch of beef jerky I do, I write down because I wanna know exactly how much weight I start with and I end with. That way I know for sure my weight loss, uh, if it's gonna be shelf stable or not. Uh, I just need to know these things. It's just a sheet I created myself. So I have a 2.235 kg of meat. I've listed the ingredients below. So we're gonna have pickling salt. That's salt with the cure, because in Canada, that's the only way I can get it. We're gonna use real bourbon. We're gonna use the chipotle powder that I made myself. I know, call me crazy, but I love making everything myself if I can. And we're gonna use real maple syrup. So all I'm gonna do now is take the kilos, cause I have everything either in percentages or grams per kilo. And like I was saying before, if I had 5.6 kilos of meat, I multiply that by the bourbon, I know exactly how much bourbon. Chipotle, maple syrup, and it doesn't matter how much meat you start with. 
which is the beauty of it. And I will list everything below the recipe so you can use this same, I call it scale recipe that you can uh, make your own beef jerky. And everybody with a smoker can do this. It doesn't matter if you have a Traeger or Weber grill or your own custom big offset, small offset, you can do it. And I'm walking all the way through. First thing I like to do is weigh the salt first. Always separate, always first. I'm very exact with the salt. Uh, don't like to go crazy. I don't use the same spoon. I don't want any of that pickling salt in anything else by accident. So we're gonna take you there. I'm gonna weigh out the Chipotle next because it's the only other powder that's going in here. And to talk about the Chipotle, I actually took jalapenos, smoked them in the smoker for I think four or five hours, and then I threw them in the dehydrator and then just totally dried them out and then ground them down and it's beautiful. We're gonna weigh out the bourbon next. Uh, 60. And I've got real, it's gotta be Canadian maple syrup. And we need. I like to wear gloves because it does get messy. I always take the salt first, sprinkle it around as best you can, and then we're gonna mix this first. Because the salt, you really wanna make sure that it's uh, distributed evenly all over the place the best you can. That, and we're gonna add the Chipotle next. Just give this a quick mix. And now the liquid portion. We're gonna add the bourbon. And the maple syrup. And just get your hands in here now. But what I like to do, take it one step further and throw it into a vacuum bag because that vacuum, when the meat is under vacuum, it really helps expand those pores and it really drives everything in. Uh, I just find it works better. So if you have a vacuum packaging machine, go get a bag and uh, fill this. That's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna get all that in there because we have some salt and everything else which is still in there. We want that to flavor the meat. Especially when there's liquid, I like to oversize the bag a bit just to be uh, careful. And one tip, if you're vacuum packaging anything with liquid, hard to show you but hang it over the edge and hold the bag into the vacuum packaging machine because that way these small ones it's very hard for them to pull the liquid up just try it, it makes a difference we've got this vacuum packed and I'm just going to press it out a little bit just so it's a little bit flatter take a marker write on what it is just that you know for sure. And you know what, throw the date on too. It's March 13th. And what I found, I usually let it sit minimum two days. I prefer three or four days. So it's actually Wednesday today. I can't do it Saturday, but I'm gonna do it Sunday, which gives me that extra day of the spice and salt just doing its thing, getting right into that meat, flavoring it better. You could probably leave it overnight. Not long enough though. Min I leave it minimum two days and then you get an awesome product. A day or two longer, perfect. 
And uh, that's it for tonight. Gonna just put this in the fridge and uh, see you Sunday morning. Welcome back, people. It's smoking day and uh, it's actually uh, snowing right now. This weather is a little nuts. So first thing we gotta do is build the fire. Before I do anything, for me, I take a normal piece of uh, firewood and cut it in half and split it down into these small pieces because beef jerky, I have such a small fire and this way I can really maintain it much better because I only need small pieces. Yes, it's a lot more work, but that's okay. And just like that, we got fire. Now I'm just gonna build it up and uh, get the smoker hot enough. And in the meantime, we're gonna go uh, load up the rack. It is a little bit messy and it's nice that I can do this outside. Just put you there. Now, there's no trick to this. The only thing is you don't want pieces overlapping. They can touch beside each other because they will shrink up anyways. But if they overlap, you basically just doubled the thickness and that takes a lot longer to actually get done and that's not good. It's kind of like a big puzzle. I'm just taking piece by piece load up the rack. I get about two and a half kilos worth of meat on a rack, which is kind of nice. Anyways, I'm gonna just continue this. And look at that. I'm gonna even have a little bit of leftover space. There we go. Uh, the smoker's almost to temp and we're gonna get this in shortly. There she goes. The beef jerky is in. My most important job is to keep this fire at a very consistent uh, size. Nice bed of coals. Now realistically, with these small pieces, I throw two or three on every time to add to the fire. And that's, that's enough. I just need to keep it small and maintain that temperature. And uh, for the first hour, I'm just gonna leave it in there and uh, not do anything. And then uh, after that, I'm gonna show you what I do to make the beef jerky. Okay, let's take a peek. That's looking good, but this is what I have to do. I have to flip it 180 degrees and get it back in there. Normally when I have multiple racks, after the first hour, I take the top one, put it at the bottom, and then move them all up. And from that first hour on, every half an hour, I do that. That way I get a much more even product on all the racks. Yes, it's a little bit more work, but I know what to do now because I've done many, 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 many batches. And with trial and error, this is the way I do it. And normally after the first hour and a half, I actually flip them 180 degrees because we know the hotter side cooler side and it does make a difference. I have no fan in here and it's just the way the smoke comes in naturally. It's a little bit of work but this way I know for sure I get a very even consistent product on all the racks in one go and I just do it. I love it and uh, so come back in a half an hour and check it again 
and then so on. Yes, I know this weather is really weird. We got lots of sun out now. I, I don't know. Anyways, we're at two and a half hours. Let's just take a quick peek because I'm not going to bore you with the whole check every time. It, it's too much and there's not enough change. Uh, still, still a ways to go, but it's looking great. We just need time and that hot air sucking away all that moisture to make it beef jerky. Okay, everybody, we're inside. I didn't film outside. The weather's too crazy today. Uh, four hours and like 45 minutes. It's a little bit no longer than my normal batches, but you have to remember all that extra liquid we added for the flavoring, the maple syrup, the bourbon, that's all liquid that you have to get rid of too, because the, the meat will soak a little bit of that up and it just takes time to get rid of it. One other thing though, I'm gonna let it sit here before I do the final way, I'm gonna let it sit here for at least an hour because this is still really warm and through normal evaporation, this will lose one or 2% more water, which is perfect. With the magic of TV, I'll be right back. And then finish out the video. Okay, everybody, I let it cool down for an hour and I just did the math. Now, when you do the math, you have to take the meat and all the spices and salt into consideration for your total weight. So I had 2,539 grams. I ended up with 1,245 grams. So I lost 1,294 grams. So we lost 51% of the weight. And now we have this. I am ended up with 49% of the total start weight. So that's good. I'm right in where I like to be for uh, beef jerky. So now what that means is with all that water lost, because bacteria need water to grow and with all that water gone, bacteria really can't grow. Uh, they still can, but it most of them can't. So this becomes very shelf stable, which means it really doesn't need refrigeration. Uh, so technically I could put vacuum pack this and take it camping with me and not worry. The beauty of it, what you can also do is pack it off and throw it in the freezer and you can have it indefinitely then. That's the beauty of beef jerky. It will last you a very, very long time. Just take a piece. Looks good, smells good. Let's cut a few pieces. Nice. Tastes so good. And remember, I talked about the way I cut it with the grain. So now, you just pull it. Because those grains go all the way down the piece, you just pull it like that, get a nice little chunk and eat it. I don't know, I just find it's a cool way to do it, fun to eat it that way, you know, you rip a piece off and eat it. It looks good, tastes great. I'm really happy with that. And let's take a few extra pieces here just to look. I'm right in my target area of where I like to lose the weight of the water. I like to be anywhere between 45 and 50%. So I'm right there. I'm happy. Uh, I love this. Like, like all my videos, if you guys have questions, don't hesitate to leave them below. If you think I forgot something or uh, touched on something not enough, Ask me a question, I will answer your, your questions. And with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support. 
Uh, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and uh, again, go ahead and try this. You'll be happy, and uh, happy eating.